Hello, welcome to the recap section of the certification tutorial. And today's uh, video, we are going to go through the recap of Power BI. So just a quick rundown to help everyone understand and especially focus on one specific BI tool. In this case, it's Power BI. We'll be going through the sources, the use cases, and most of the things that we have already covered in the previous lessons, except it's going to be specific to Power BI and it'll be more of a speed run. Let's start with the sources. Creation of a Power BI source is pretty straightforward. All you need to do is define the corresponding credentials and you're good to go. Follow my sections accordingly. Follow the clicks that I do in this case, going through data sources and going to the BI section within data sources. In most cases, defining a username password is what you need for an application type of master user. The application ID can be formed in the Azure admin portal system or you can contact your Power BI admins for the same. Alternate, alternatively, if you want to go ahead for a service principle use case, all you need to do is add the application secret ID and tenant ID, which is also provided by the uh, Azure portal or your corresponding Power BI admins. Additionally, if you want to run your test cases via the filter of, say, specific user groups, implying you want to run test cases while impersonating specific objects or roles, you can add them right here as well. These can be imported and exported. Do not forget to test your connection before saving it. Now let's quickly jump into Power BI source usage. For this, I will start with the brand new use case and just illustrate how I would like to run this. Let's delete everything here for the time being. Let's get into Power BI. By the way, this is how you can delete nodes in case we have not covered that earlier. Drag and drop the Power BI, node or Power BI source node from the sources section. Rename it accordingly. Choose the connection you would like to run it with and then correspondingly click on add page all the workspaces that you have access to will be present right there and within those you can select what specific page or sub page you would like to run with here i picked up one specific system but again if you have a report with slicers if you have a report with uh, other complex visuals you can pick those up as well as needed we'll wait for a couple of seconds for our power bi system to bootstrap and start running so here, if I want to pick up a very specific graph, all I have to do is go into visuals and pick up that corresponding graph right there like this. Alternatively, if I have a more, much more complex graph, which has slicers and other aspects, those will also be present within visuals. Now let's switch over to a system which has a few more filters present. Let's go into sandbox. Once again, the aspect of sources is to pull out data sources from your Power BI system. Since our application is based on Apache Spark, once these data sets are pulled out of Power BI, these are basically in-memory data sets. That's how we intend to use them. If you see this kind of error pop-up, which is cannot load model, be sure to check the details. And in most cases, you will see this particular detail layout. This is capacity operation failed with error code capacity not active. This is something that you might notice if you're working with a trial version of Power BI or if you have some kind of capacity model enabled. The main gist of this is that your Power BI uh, system for specific workspaces might have to be switched on. This is because Power BI comes off as a service and if you have a lot of workspaces, you might have to switch those on before you can actually pull the report. And so in this case, that's what happened. In many cases, uh, the way they have defined the system is that they can just directly refresh the, uh, refresh the corresponding page and you're good to go. In other cases, you'll have to contact your admins and ask them to switch on the capacity for these use cases. That's how the Power BI sources work. Once again, if you have specific filters, you can add them here. You will find them right there. Feel free to play around with the specific filters. Feel free to parameterize this. And finally, once again, you can select multiple visuals and the application is always going to ask you for a bookmark. So what's a bookmark? Well, a bookmark is, well, a state of the report as a whole. So here I've selected Asia Pacific, and now you see that the numbers that we'll be working with. So here's some of sales by ship mode. If you go to the visual, you'll see some of sales by ship mode. Standard class has changed up because we have applied a specific visual out there. So right now it's 2.5 million, and right now the visuals don't say that. Right now the visual says 7.6 million, and that's the same thing you will see here. Right now we'll say 7.5. But if you want to ensure that the numbers you're pulling are in this case, well, 2.5 million after the application of this specific bookmark, you'll have to capture this bookmark. Now that you capture this bookmark, the data sets will be pulled in accordingly itself. 
and does not happen in the showcase window, but it happens in the results section. So here, and what you have to do is just run the system now. And what basically this is going to do is run the actual report as a whole. We see these test cases running live and after this we'll quickly cover up the other aspect which is regression but before that as you imagine since we are creating data sets itself as we saw in our previous lessons the way you want to work with these data sets depend entirely on your test case and your user requirement so feel free to mix and match different processor nodes different comparisons rules observability and other nodes that the application provides so here we see we have applied those specific shipments and here we go in this case we have applied those specific filters and you're picking the numbers as expected now let's get into regression if you're working with bi tools the way to create let's go with upgrade the way to create an upgrade node is to just drag and drop it select two distinct uh two distinct or same connections depending say on qa versus prod or if you have the same connections for them you can work with them as well in comparison mode select what the kind of comparison you'd like to run with from the get-go so I can, of course, choose specifics here, but let's go with text for now. Then let's add a page. And in this case, again, I'm going to have my test cases created uh, simply selecting the page that we want to work with and doing the same for our report B as well. We'll capture the bookmark here. And of course, if you want, we can change filters and apply parameterized filters here as well. In fact, you can make sure that you're applying the same set of filters for both the reports if needed. So report A is defined right there. I see it's simple. And let's go ahead and pick up report B. So as you see, so store sales dev. Now let's make this store sales production. Here we go. Now we are working with two distinct reports. Let's capture the bookmark and then let's run this particular test case. So yeah, that's basically the recap of Power BI. This is how we do things in Power BI. And it's not widely different from Tableau itself. And we'll have a separate lesson, lesson dedicated to the Tableau recap. So in this particular way, we basically define our connections and run Power BI specific modes. Regression works in the same way. The only aspect there is instead of two distinct reports, you're going to have the same report with a benchmark, which basically says that this particular benchmark will be considered the source of truth. So here, instead of report and report view in regression, you'll have benchmark and current run. As you see, you can, of course, keep track of all these corresponding aspects in the execution results as well, on what exactly happened on each and every step. And of course, the result keeps things clear, as you see right there text differences and of course if the appearance differences those are tagged in right here as well so in this particular fashion we have wrapped up our power bi recap